And I'm interested in about what you made of these new feats, in particular, what this sixth test launch really showed us, because they didn't get to catch once again with those so-called chopsticks. Yeah, this, this test was a mix. However, I would definitely put it in the win column. We aren't used to seeing uh, an, a company or even a government agency push technology like SpaceX is doing. And on this flight, although it was disappointing not to get the catch, we knew that was a possibility. They're making good calls, they're making safe calls. The Starship itself, which is actually the more complex and important vehicle, went on to succeed beyond anyone's uh, imagination. Mm. They are taking out weight of the vehicle by eliminating tiles just to test the boundaries, uh, to make sure that they are getting the most out of every second of the vehicle. And seeing that stage land, the second stage, into the ocean in such a controlled way, that's the goal. The goal is continuing to march on to a fully reusable two-stage vehicle and they made a lot of progress uh also with the engine lighting on uh the second vehicle on the second stage so mm. uh a mix but i'd put it in the wind column okay so the fact that it survived re-entry through earth's atmosphere the fact that we saw a reigniting of one of the raptor engines steering that suddenly becomes possible just pitch us forward what next is achievable what Ultimately, how quickly can we suddenly see trips to Mars on this kind of a vehicle? Well, I, th I think the key is that the speed over the next couple of years, if we are seeing the cadence increase as we did with their Falcon 9 vehicle, where they're launching more than 100 a year. Gwen Shotwell recently said they'll be uh, at the 400 mark in four years with this vehicle. I mean, if they can make that, you then will be having on orbit fuel transfers. That's the key to going beyond low Earth orbit. Whether this administration is still gonna wanna fulfill a lunar ambition, we don't know, but definitely we're hearing the president-elect and Elon talk about Mars trips and mm. those require refueling in low Earth orbit a technology that isn't proven, but isn't that complex. Uh, you could see missions to Mars as they're talking about in yeah. the four or five year time frame. I doubt they would put people on them, but that is indeed what the president has at least uh, talked about doing within his term. I mean, Laurie, yeah, we were just seeing pictures of President-elect Trump there alongside Elon Musk. You've been there. You were in that transition team, the NASA transition team with President-elect Obama at the time. How likely are we to see other companies thrive in this new era where SpaceX is so integral and so close to the next administration? Well, it, it is a, a really strange trajectory in the sense that the Obama transition team that I led back in 2008 and 2009 set us on a course for a more competitive uh, arrangement to have our space transportation to and from low Earth orbit that gave the opening to SpaceX that they have absolutely run through and now have dominated the market. You couldn't have guessed back then how much farther ahead they would be than everyone else. Mm -hmm. They hadn't even been able to get contracts through uh, the military side and now they're the dominant player. So. At this point, I think any transition team, uh, once they're there, if the Trump folks even go this route, is to put in policies that will allow for more competition. The goal is never a monopoly. In fact, we did what we did because there was a monopoly, the United Launch Alliance, and it was much more expensive to the government. So as much as politically uh, things are really tense uh, between competitors right now, there's there's no reason we shouldn't be able to inspire more people than just SpaceX to be making these advancements. And yeah. I don't think we want just a single player. So briefly, Laurie, where do you back in the tech stack of, of ultimately rocket companies and space industry right now? Well, at, at this point, United Launch Alliance is still launching. It's more expensive. They're not reusable. Blue Origin has launched now their Vulcan rocket and I think in 2025 will launch New Glenn, which is supposed to be reusable over the longer term. Uh, the Europeans are developing new vehicles, mostly not reusable. 
Uh, so there is no question SpaceX is in the lead. As I have said in my book, uh, be hard for anyone to catch up in 10 years uh, unless uh, SpaceX and Elon trips.